Welcome everyone to this solo playthrough of Brass Birmingham where we are going against two bots using the custom variant of the Motoma rules. The deck is a lot bigger since it includes cards for the blue area up in the North Midlands and we also have to keep track of money in this one. We won't always be going fussed. We are playing on the medium difficulty, so the bots have already developed some of their industries. And as you can see, the markets are very spread out across the board, with the Wild Toil in Gloucester. Here though is our opening hand of cards, with us destined to focus around Brum and Coventry it seems. So let's get into the game. And for my first action, I've decided to take out a loan giving me 30 quid. The white bot decides to build a pottery industry in Coventry for 19 quid, whilst the reds have built a pottery in Stoke. Very thematic. As we keep first place going into the next round. So in seeing an opening for Iron in Brum, I decide to create my link from Oxford and then built my iron industry, which flipped instantly and gave me 6 quid. Whites then build a manufacturing industry in Canuck before developing, which earned them three victory points. Whilst the Reds built a link to Worcester and then construct a cotton mill with positions staying the same for the next round. So with me going first, I decided to build a link down to Worcester from Brum and then I built my own cotton mill. Whites built the Naff Pottery in Stafford, so they are desperate to overbuild it, but... It does only cost a coal and then they develop twice, earning 3 VP, meaning they have a great lead right now. As the Reds create a link up to Leek and then build another cotton mill, but I've no idea how they will sell that one. The Whites have the lead going into the next turn. The Whites build a link from Worcester to Kiddy along with the regional brewery. So I decided to take advantage of the link by building a cotton mill in Kitty and then doing a quick double sale to earn me some decent income along with me getting to develop me last level 1 cotton mill. The Reds decide to build a brewery in Colebrookdale so the iron market is non-existent near enough but they do then use that beer to sell their cotton in Worcester getting two great flips. But since we spent one more quid than the rest, we find ourselves in last place next round. The Whites build the brewery in Utoxta that become expensive because of the iron. But then they couldn't develop, so went for a link from Coventry to Brum instead. The Reds build a brewery in Stone because they have already built in Stoke. And then they create a link to Booth Tarns. But I decide to build a link to Colebrookdale and then I build my level 2 iron mine that gives me 16 quid back from the market. So we just made a profit from that move right there along with some great link points. But that does mean we get to give fust next round which is decent as I can then build my third level ironworks in Coventry that gives me 9 quid back after refilling the market. And it means with iron cheap I can develop my coal and manufactured goods tiles ready for the next round, which ain't far off. The Whites build a brewery in an Eaton, so basically all brewery spots are almost full up. And then they develop, which gives them three victory points. The Reds build a manufactured goods in Brum, and they instantly sell it using their own booze from stone. And that sale will see the red team going fust next round. And since they saw a gap in the market for iron, they decided to create a link up to Warsaw and build an iron mine that nearly refills the market. We though build a link from Brum to Dudley and then I build the coal mine which boosts my income to 12 a turn now. I'm looking good for next turn money wise, but points are a bit of a premium it seems. As the Whites set themselves up amazingly with a link from Brum to Tamworth where they then build a cotton factory and in all honesty they are in for a very good set of sales soon as we keep first place going into our penultimate turn. And since I can sell first I decided to build a level 2 cotton mill in Tamworth and then sell using White's beer from the South Brewery. The Reds build a coal mine in Wolverhampton and then connect up to Warsaw. 
but the coal stays on the board as it was built fussed. And whites do the same in Redditch. They must both be setting up valuable coal for the rail era, it seems. Regardless, we are going last in the final round, so let's see what happens. And the Reds build a brewery in Utoxta, and then they build a link between Colbrookdale and Wolvo. And here we go with the Whites absolutely decimating the board as they build a cotton mill in Brum and then sell both cotton and the level 1 pottery which flips over near enough all of their tiles and they have played an absolute blinder. We though see a couple links worth mecking from Tamworth to Nuneaton and Colbrookdale to Kiddy, which is probably our best way of getting points. And the first turn next round as the canal era ends. This is what the board looks like before the points are totaled. And I don't think we've done that bad. But placing no beer has been a bit of a swine. With links only though, red is on 14 points. I'm on 28. And white, with all their developing, is on 37. But after industry points, the golf seems immense as white leads with 71, I have 60, and the reds lag behind majorly on 38. On to the rail era, where we have these cards right here. So we're looking good for the left side of the board this time. And we have a whopping 57 quid in the bank with our first turn. So with us going first, I decided to get in on the booze market fast by developing my level 1 breweries and then building a level 2 in Burton. The Reds do the double rail from Warrington to Leak though, utilising their own beer. And then they build a manufactured goods industry which costs them 35 quid in total. The Whites build a link from Redditch to Brum to make use of their own coal and then they build an iron mine in Brum. But the Whites do spend the least at the end of the round. So the Whites continue their domination by building a link to Worcester and then building a cotton mill. We build a coal mine in Colbrookdale and then we build a double rail from Shrewsbury down to Kiddy. The Reds though are doing their own thing up north, building a level 5 manufactured goods industry and then selling the level 2 one. But Reds take the lead in the next round. And they couldn't double rail, but they could connect from Wolvo to Warsaw and then they can build a manufactured goods in Wolvo. I though build a cotton mill in Kitty and with the coal low I decide to build a coal mine in Leek. The Whites lastly build a coal mine in Kitty, blocking me with my plan and then connect up to Worcester. With the Whites and Reds constantly swapping and leaving me in the middle like Malcolm. Whites build a link to Redditch from Gloucester and then they fill out the iron market by building an iron mine in Redditch. We build the cotton mill in Worcester and then we sell both our cotton using my beer and the market one to develop our level 2 brewery. Reds build a link to Coventry and then they build yet another manufactured goods. If they sell all those, they will be quids in, but term-wise, we are the same again. Whites build a coal mine in stone and then build a link to Utoxeter. I build two breweries, one in Colbrookdale, which grants us that entire town, and the South Farm, hopefully it will be used during double rails and sales. As Reds double rail from Wolvo to Brum, and then build an ironworks in Dudley, as turn-wise it's the same again. The Whites create a link from Stone to Stoke, and then they build a cotton mill in Stoke. I double rail up from Worcester to Tamworth, and then I build a coal mine, that makes me some great money as we near end game. Reds double rail from Brum all the way through Nuneaton and Coventry before building a cotton mill in Nuneaton and positions once again stay the same. But whites seem to be struggling as they build a coal mine in Cannock and then connect up to Stafford. I build my last brewery and then double rail from Warsaw to Oxford but the Reds play an absolute blinder building a crap pottery in Stoke and then triple selling around Brum using my beer and the markets. 
And I'm going last in the penultimate turn where reds build a manufactured goods in Brum and then sell it using my beer. White builds a brewery in the North Farm and then sells in Worcester but caught anywhere else as it's just not connected. I overbuild in Colebrookdale with me final ironworks and then I double rail from Warsaw to the brewery using up that last booze with me going last once again in the final turn of the game where the whites build a brewery in Stafford and then sell their crap pottery to Shrewsbury. Reds fill out Brum with their last goods and then sell them. They couldn't ever sell the one up north as we build the pottery in Coventry and then sell it using the whites booze. I was hoping for Brum but it was a toss up on either and I just had to make that decision as the game comes to a close. Right here is the full map in all its glory and as you can see it is pretty stacked. What a game this was. Let's total up the final scores as after rails it's close between me and white. They have the lead with 107, I have 105 and red has 77. But final scores see me win the game with a whopping 189 to the white and reds draw of 157. The reds blitzed it in terms of industry in that era. And if they had a better canal era turn, they might have actually won. But that's it. Let's get on to my review. Firstly... We need to talk about the solo variants that I've tried and there seems to be four main ones which are realistically available and updated. The worst two for me are Victory and George. They both use a system of dice rolls to decide what and where they are building. Victory seems to keep to their network instead of darting randomly around the board but they both cheat massively getting coal and iron from anywhere, having no money to build, and they can be unfortunately too random and easy to defeat. I think I surpassed their final scores by 60 points, and it just wasn't a good game with either. Yes, George can see you play against three bots, so you can fill out the board, and it is the only one that actually does that, but I really felt it was lacking with how bad the workarounds are at its core. It don't feel like an opponent and for me that needs to happen with a solo bot. So these two just war for me. Next though we need to talk about Eliza who is the second best solo bot on offer. She is a fully automated app version but I'm not really a bloke for apps mainly because I a got a tablet so have to use my phone and if I do that it drains the battery in an hour but if you have better equipment than me I do honestly think she is a great variant mainly because she adapts to your moves and you can play against two bots during the canal area this is very challenging bot and because you have to input your moves into the app before you can complete them it's a great way to learn the game as your core suddenly the moves you shouldn't be able to do. But during the rail era, the bot tends to just become a rail placing machine instead of placing industry. And it's very disappointing as to double rail and sell, they just don't spend beer. And they also get full access to coal anywhere without links. And that cheating personally puts me off. But for learning the game because of the app, doing basically everything, it also adding up all your points, for instance, I think you should play against Eliza for your first solo experiences and to learn the game. But the Motoma for me is head and shoulders above the rest. It has cards as well as an app variant, but if you download the translated German version, you can go against two bots like I have and... This for me now is my preferred way to play as yes most of the action is down in the black country and brum but 
adding the North Midlands really opens the game up just that little bit more. And I love that the Motama feels like you're playing against regular opponents as they could just buy coal or flog their goods without links and beer. And that for me is brilliant as suddenly you can plan your turns better and act accordingly like you would in a real match with them building quite smart in both eras and if you let them dictate the flow of the game they will take advantage and beat you on the hardest difficulty and i love that it's really pushed me to play the game smarter and that makes this the perfect bot for me but Let's talk about the game itself, which I think is really special and deserves the top spot of greatest board game ever. From the moment I first played this, I knew it was a cut above any Euro that I have played so far. And yes, that is only a relatively short board game lifespan, but it's because of the internal balance with the cards, industries and the boost selling mechanic on top of the very simple to play and learn rules that this just comes all together and crafts perfection. It's like a glass replica of Knott's Forest's Champions League trophy I saw once. A trophy hand formed and blown by a bloke I once worked with from the main Starbridge glass factory. A bloke whom also once made a glass piece for Ronald Reagan in the White House when he was president. A bloke who unfortunately is no longer with us. A bloke who got shafted by the British government when they closed our industries and they forced him to basically take a job on as a cleaner on the buses to keep his pension. Seriously, stuff the twats who ruined our industry and decimated me beautiful tan. But the hard work and craft put into this game is on full display and its quality oozes in every part. Seriously, Indiana Jones should get hold of a copy and put it in a museum, it's that great. The box art, the beautiful board with all the Midlands towns and cities on it, a board which is double-sided along with the player industry boards to replicate day and night, a theme of the black country where it was black by day, red by night because of the heavy industrial area working day and night causing smoke in the day and fires at night with the furnaces blazing away. The board has parts of industries from each and every town. Colebrookdale, modernly known as the area of Telford, is the home of Ironbridge. Coventry, Brougham and Worcester have their cathedrals drawn on the board. Burton and Warsaw, well known for brewing because of the waterways. Stoke shows off the potteries it's famous for as Dudley, my hometown, has my home of Netherton on the board with the canalways. Coal, ironworks, our castle and also St Andrew's Church which is where my wife and all my kids were christened along with a few mates of my married in. And also is home to my wife's grandparents' graves. The board illustrations also transfer over to the amazing looking cards for each individual town and city. The artwork is perfect for the era. And the game is so well researched. Every avatar you can choose is a real person who owned industries in the industrial era. Now, I don't know if it's just because I got the deluxe version with the iron clay is the my copy is so amazingly produced of never seen the retail version of this game but the industry tiles are well designed and have just the right quality of thickness for long term use the coal and iron cubes are a great idea and the wooden beer barrels are just amazing Every part of this game screams premium product and yes I will admit I once thought the game could be that great since it's priced at 50 to 60 quid but my god 
I think it's well worth that money for the components and work that has gone into the presentation of this game alone. But what of the game itself? Well, why I enjoy this so much is because you always have something to do on every turn. And even with just five actions to choose from, I have never once felt like I couldn't do whatever I wanted in some form. And tactically, you have so many options once you realise how the game works and how your thought process opens up with every turn. Even the process of going first, mid or last based on how much money you've spent during your turn is amazing as often you'll want to spend big to get a great few sales off next turn. But if you leave those sales open, you suddenly might not be able to get them triggered <laughs> next round as Yo will get last and the other players will suddenly sell everything from under your nose, getting rid of the booze. Even the process of having money every turn via your income from industry or taking out loans for money which lowers your income can be tactical as you run the risk of always having just enough or having lots of money and money income doesn't count for point gain that wins the game itself so you can have this fine balance of tactical prowess with money that can really open up your plans going forwards and then you also have the industries themselves as you don't want to just place level one industries in the canal era as they disappear come the rail era so you can get level twos or level threes out early and then suddenly they are worth double points because you gain them from both eras if you get them off. And then you add in your links which can sometimes make up half your points if you place them in the right areas where industry is paramount. Along with rails being able to be doubled with coal and beer. All on top of the cards of which can be rare and dictate where you are actually able to place industry. A resource which sees you always have 8 until the very short deck is depleted and suddenly you only have 4 turns left and all of a sudden you're worried you might not have planned your turns outright. Cards which can be counted very easily. So you sort of know if you're good enough what people have and where you could go and this system is just brilliant. As the limited nature of the amount of turns you have along with the competitive nature of your opponents means you want to try and get certain things done in certain time frames and you can always feel rushed and you can get this adrenaline feeling overcoming your body as someone might hinder or inadvertently help you out by stealing an industry tile or placing a link to your place that you otherwise didn't want to waste a precious card resource on getting to it's a mighty fine balance of theme and mechanics which means this game can be easily played by everyone but if you get heavily invested it could be perfect for tournament play at the highest level and it's not often games come along which meld that fine line so precisely one mistake or misplay at the highest level and you'll be toast but casually you can play this game for fun just building links and industries and playing so open that you just don't care about mistakes and it's just a laugh against your mates or bots and I don't think any game I've ever played feels as perfectly internally balanced as this one does yeah it's really opened my eyes to great euros as this completes me if i only had one board game to play on a desert island this might be up there in contention as this probably is top one or top three now for me my favorite board games of all time i have an absolute blast playing this every time i get it out on the table as the homelander meme says this is perfect perfect everything down to the last details and it's not just because my town Dudley is on it it's not just because it's the Midlands or Victorian industry which made us in the black country famous yes I feel this 
games theme more living in a place that used to be the home of industry i can leave me house and see dudley canals one and two i live right near netherton tunnel the home of cobb's engine ass which was the pumping station for the coal mine there and i used to live in salt wells which was home to dalton's clay pit my great granddad's worked at booth and my council house i'm living in making all my videos exists because of the industry here a coal miner lived here once who worked down raleigh a mine that sits there to this day and stretches all the way to turner's hill my wife's mom's parents knew the family who lived here the rhubarb plants they planted are in the bottom of the garden still growing i refuse to dig them up as it's a piece of history and history is all around me here if the mines pits or steelworks were still open i and all my schoolmates would have no doubt had jobs for life in one of the industries in around Netherton. But before I was born it was ripped away and now we have heavy unemployment here as families and livelihoods are decimated. When I was at school I was taught by male teachers who retrained in school teaching after being let go from Round Oak Steelworks. A place where my mother-in-law's dad died as he was crushed in an accident. And a place that features on Depeche Mode's Some Great Reward album cover. But my generation and my children's generation can see all around us the devastating effects of removing the industries from here as in the late 80s they built the massive retail part that is the Merry Hill to transfer us from manufacturers into a service-based tan and we all know how bad retail is going right now so we've got it all to come here in dudley when that goes kaput as the one third of our total town's population that is already unemployed or economically inactive might just become half or even two thirds and that would be devastating to this once great town home of the world's thickest and best coal say what you want about playing this game and getting the most points as rich toffs becoming even richer by building the canals rails and industries of the midlands and what it did to the environment but i personally love building netherton coal and hingley steel mill in dudley on the board it makes me feel sort of proud that i'm creating work for all the folk there building a thriving industry along with building the canals which are still there to this day unlike our railway so call me biased all you like but this has opened up conversations to have with my kids like my granddad had with me of course same dad as he's welsh and come from hollyhead so he just don't get it he has his own island stories to tell with the shipping industry that his dad my granddad worked in all his life on the docks there but i love this game it's perfection the mechanics the presentation the tactics this is the mary poppins of board games it's practically perfect in every way and i'd recommend watching some history on youtube if you ever wanted to learn more about the black country but for now buy it try it i don't think you'll be disappointed and thanks for watching